Do you want to know how to let go and move on from a toxic relationship? Let's face it, we all want to know how to leave that toxic person. It could be a parent, a partner, a sibling or a work colleague. And I get so many messages asking how to deal with that narcissistic mother-in-law. But sometimes the toxic person can be much harder to spot. Maybe it's a best friend or your son or daughter as your mind works overtime to deny the negative feelings that they cause. But regardless of who it is and the relationship that you have with them, there comes a time when we feel we've just had enough and you realise that you just cannot take any more and you need to get them out of your life or at least limit or manage the contact that you have with them. So today, let's talk about how to let go and move on from a toxic relationship. If you're new to my channel, I'm Sue Blackhurst and I bring the world of social psychology into everyday language. I post videos every Monday and Thursday, so if you want to understand why people behave the way that they do, subscribe to my channel now and get weekly insights into this fascinating world of human behaviour. And if you're feeling alone now and believing that whatever you do seems to backfire, leaving you lying awake at night wondering how much more could you self-sabotage your life, well, first of all, you're not alone. So if you want to find out how you can overcome the challenges in your life, then do stay watching as I'll be sharing how you can find emotional happiness at the end of this video. It sounds an easy decision, especially if they aren't family and there's no children involved, but moving on from a toxic relationship can be a difficult, very long and drawn out process as toxic people are narcissists who depend on the people they emotionally, financially or psychologically drain. They need to constantly prove to themselves that they are better, stronger and smarter than everyone else. So they always need someone to put down and manipulate. And if you're their easy target, it makes it really hard to find the mental strength that is needed to get them out of your life. You see, when faced with the possibility of rejection, narcissists up their game, somehow managing to worm their way back into your life. They're a bit like a yo-yo because no sooner have you got them as far away from you as possible, somehow they always manage to reel themselves back into your life. Whatever distance you're able to put between yourself and the narcissist, they have this unique ability to remain in your life emotionally, if not physically. Because without even seeing them, they're going to leave you wondering what they're thinking and what they're doing. And in extreme cases, have you questioning whether you've made the right decision to move on and if you will ever be able to get through the day without them dominating your thoughts. But the simple fact that they are still on your mind means that the narcissist is still holding control. And as long as they have control, your defenses are down. And it's when you're in this weakened and I say more vulnerable state that you are open to their toxic attack. And they're going to use every trick to get back into your life and back in control, which is exactly where they want and need to be. Well, everybody deserves healthy relationships where you aren't being manipulated. So here are three rules to abide by if you want to move on from or leave a toxic relationship for good. Go no contact. Once you let go and move on, be prepared for the narcissist to make every attempt to reach out for you in any way possible. So the first thing is it's essential to remember that if the nature of the relationship allows you to walk away, once you've made the decision to cut all ties, then that is exactly what you need to do. Block their mobile or cell number and find somebody who's got IT so that all their emails go into junk and then you can have a sense of pleasure as you empty the trash of all of their unread emails. And if you have any mutual friends, be aware that they probably won't see or know the narcissist like you do because they're not the narcissist victim. So you now have two options. You can either accept that you have mutual friends that you don't want to lose. So just tell them that you've moved on and need to cut all ties and no longer want to talk about the narcissist or the relationship that you've had with them. Make it very clear that you do not want to be part of any event or conversation where the narcissist is included. And also make it clear that you don't want any aspect of your life to be fed back to the person that you have just made every effort to leave. Or your second option 
is to walk away from all non associates completely and spend time with people who have no connection or ties, whilst building up a new and unrelated network of friends or colleagues. But whatever decision is right for you, it doesn't mean ignoring the narcissist for a day or playing it cool for a week. You need to make a lifelong commitment to not engage and be strong enough to stick with it. Go low contact. It's not always feasible or realistic to walk away from a toxic relationship, especially if you have children or joint assets. But it's also not easy if it's a family member that you need to see every Sunday for that weekly family gathering, or maybe it's a work colleague and you're unable to change departments, let alone change jobs. So when no contact isn't possible, going low contact means that they have a role within your life, but they aren't a part of your life, meaning that you are not responsible for their thoughts and feelings, and therefore you're not under their power or their control. I say it's like, think of them like the person you'd call to fix the plumbing. You know, you have no option but to call on them to resolve a certain issue, but they don't have the ability to emotionally impact your life in any way. You may see them and you may converse with them as they are there in person, but the moment they are no longer in the room or out of sight, they are no longer on your mind and have an ability to have a control on your life. Now, we all know that there's boundaries when calling the plumber because your conversations are going to be kept very superficial in order to get what needs to be done completed with the least amount of fuss and time and connection. So when going low contact with a narcissist, you need to have this same level of boundaries to protect your mental strength and your feelings. So be courteous, be polite, and most of all, stand up tall and hold your head up high and ensure that you don't get dragged into their emotional topics or drawn in by their comments or looks. If you need to visualize the mother-in-law fixing the leaking shower, then why not? You have them in your life, but that doesn't mean they have the ability to hijack your emotions or to sabotage your day. Keep emotion out of it. Our emotions play havoc with all our actions, so it's essential that you remain indifferent to whatever situations and conversations have gone on in the past, because the longer you churn over what has been, the more you're going to forget the real reasons that have led you to make the decisions that you are now making to let go and move on. Watch any movie with a baddie and at some stage there's going to be a moment where we actually feel sorry for them. It's that time when the script writer depicts the villain as the victim and I don't think I'm alone seeing this likeable side to Hannibal Lecter in Silence of the Lambs. So what is my point here? Well, I remember a past relationship of my own and someone referring to him as the iron hand in the velvet glove. And it took me six months to see something that everybody else could see, but were just too afraid to tell me just in case they were wrong. And it wasn't until I stopped ignoring all the little things that he said and did that hurt both myself and my family, that I realized that I was only remembering what I wanted to be true and not what was the reality. Once I literally woke up and saw the iron hand and not the velvet glove, he no longer had any control over me as I stopped feeling guilty and responsible for all his moods and actions. So here's the thing, we did have some good times and unless it's an unavoidable relationship that's forced upon you like the mother or father-in-law, no matter how toxic, there will always be good times and happy memories because let's face it, that's how you got involved with them in the first place. But if the good times filled the majority of your relationship, you wouldn't be feeling the way you do. So, it's essential that you recall all the painful times to remind yourself how that person made you feel and make the decision to leave based upon those feelings. If you need to, it can also really help to write down all the events, situations, comments, and even the looks that have made you crumble inside as a visual reminder that you need to let go and move on. Try to see your toxic relationship like you know an electrical extension cable and you are simply plugged into their energy source. Because as long as you are connected to them, they have the power over you. So the only way that you can find your own energy source is to disconnect completely. There are millions of other power sources out there that you can connect to but it's only when you are free that you are able to find the ones that give you the power and help you to light up 
rather than stay with the ones that drain you of all your own energy. If you've been affected by a toxic relationship and feel that you are ready to rebuild your mental strength, well, there's no better time to start my 20-day Overcome Obstacles training program because this has everything that you need to let go of the toxic past and move on. Each day, I'm going to give you the tools to help you find out what is stopping you from finding that happiness and freedom and the motivation to make the subtle changes that you need to get back on track. It costs less than a new haircut and it's even more uplifting. You can access the program by downloading my free book on how to reframe self-critical thoughts. The link is in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. Now don't forget to like and share the video and do leave me a comment with your thoughts. And if you've not already subscribed, well, this is the time to do it. Do take care and I will see you next time.